Good morning, all. Once again, I welcome you the series of talks on the various topics of management on the specifically digital marketing. And uh, today is the second session on the foundations of digital marketing. In our first session, we have talked about the foundation, the basic fundamental aspects of marketing, as well as how marketing have changed in the recent era. We have also seen the various uh, relevance of the internet resources, the aspects of development of mobile marketing, e-marketing, and how digital marketing is helping the organizations to reach the consumers in a very in a easy way. We have also seen the various characteristics, features, what makes digital marketing better? We have also seen how the growth had happened in the digital marketing domain. Today, we will start off our discussion with the aspect of the distinction or the differences between traditional marketing and digital marketing. And I've tried to create a table which will try to address the various fundamental issues by which digital marketing and traditional marketing can be differentiated. On the left-hand side column, if you see, we talk about the various bases. So I've talked about four bases. Number one, the type of marketing. Number two, the direction of the communication. Number three, the scheduling aspect. And number four, the availability. We will go one by one. After discussing all these four, we will also talk about the language, which also play an important role. So we'll start with the first aspect of the types of marketing. So when we talk about the, the traditional marketing, it is structured and clear advertising campaign goals are defined. You may ask, then if digital marketing is not structured, then how results can be achieved as well as how an organization can depend on the results of the digital marketing. It's true. When we talk about the traditional marketing, it says that you have a predefined budget. That okay, I will be spending 20 lakh of rupees on the marketing expenses in the upcoming year. And then you define that, okay, my investment and my expenses on the hoarding will be X. My investment on the banner ads will be Y. My investment on television advertisement will be Z. Likewise, it's defined. And as I've said in my first session, getting actual response from the various traditional marketing channels to be specific promotional channels is very, very difficult. You do not know that how many persons have actually seen your hoarding and how many persons after seeing your hoarding have decided that they will go for buying the product from your by seeing your hoarding. Since you do not have the data, it is not a two-way approach. You cannot take any rectification or corrective actions. Whatever you have planned, that planning needs to be carried forward. And accordingly, that planning needs to be carried forward and it needs to be implemented in the future course of market. But in digital marketing, since you can track the data at each and every moment, it is very easy for you to get an access to the various information and you can take a call. Okay, my X medium is not giving me good results. So I may withdraw the money from X and invest that equivalent money to Y because Y is responding well for me. So you can see here, it is being said, digital marketing is more unstructured. This is how it is unstructured. You can take corrective and rectification actions at each and every moment. As a result of which, you can get the betterment of your results. You can get the status updates, regular status updates. Once your digital marketing campaign have picked you can definitely see and review your results maybe twice or thrice daily. Yes, 
when you are starting up with your digital marketing campaign, it will take some time, maybe a week or so. It depends on the type of tool, whatever we are using to get the pick out of the various digital marketing promotions. But once it is more or less stabilized and it had started giving you responses, you can review the advertisements maybe twice or thrice daily, maybe in the morning, maybe in the afternoon, maybe in the evening, maybe in the night even. And you can see how and what way is helping you to get a better results. So that is how it is unstructured because you have a scope to review and take corrective actions or rectifications. You can get the status updates from the various types of tools. Just to give you some examples, if you see a advertisement which appears in a search engine, I will show you about that at the last part of the class. The adjustments you can do maybe thrice or twice daily. In case of a social media ad, any social media ad for that matter, maybe the adjustments you need to do maybe once or at most twice daily. So the adjustment and these status updates is also dependent on the type of digital marketing you are doing. It depends on if you are using a blog, posts in the blog, and you are promoting you with the, using the search engine, then your review will be the way I have said. But you are getting some comments on the social media posts, on the various handles of social media. You need to respond and accordingly take corrective actions. If you are getting a feedback, no, no, it is not responding well, it is not being taken in the right spirit then you need to take rectification actions and corrective actions and see how it may be improved upon. Because ultimately, your objective is to connect with your prospects and consumers in the best possible way. For getting connected with your prospects, since digital marketing's fundamental thing is a two-way two -way follow of communication, since it's two-way, if it happens for one way, then digital marketing initiatives are not successful. So it is very important that rectification actions and review is being done for any digital marketing initiatives and campaign at each and every moment so that you can get a better results. Social media posts in various handles, starting from Instagram, Facebook, X, tweet, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, creating a video and promoting. All these things need to be reviewed properly. If you are not reviewing that, it's difficult to get good results from the digital marketing. You will find somebody say that the digital marketing is not giving me good results. One of the two things may have happened. One, it may have happened that they are not reviewing the results and they are not adjusting the campaigns. Or you need to give some breathing space to the advertisement to function properly. You need to give some time to them to function properly. If you do not give proper time to function, then it will be difficult for you to get the better results. So that is the type of marketing, the fundamental difference between traditional marketing and digital marketing. So when we talk about the direction of communication, we can see here, this we have discussed earlier also, traditional marketing is one to many, it is unidirectional. There is not so much of a concept of feedback. Since you are not in a position to take rectification or corrective actions, and you're also not in a position to know who have responded to your various digital marketing promotion, uh, traditional marketing promotions and advertisements in what way? Who have responded positively, who have responded in an average way, who have responded in a negative way, you are not in a position to know so you cannot take any rectification or corrective actions. So it is more like unidirectional. It is like spreading of information by the company. Only listen passively. Rather, I should say, listening nothing because you are not in a position, you do not have any tool or ways to listen to your consumers. Maybe sometimes, some may something, it can spread using the word of mouth and you can get to know, but that's not a structured way. So the direction of communication in case of a traditional marketing 
is unidirectional or one way for that matter. But for digital marketing, since we have said earlier, it is two way, it is multi directional. It is multi directional, many to many. I'm giving a information to my consumers, consumers are responding back to me. The organizations or the persons who have taken my service, they are also sharing a feedback using the uh, share feedback option. The consumers are reviewing those feedbacks, taking some actions, responding to me. It's a complex framework, but it's a multi-directional. Many are helping me to promote my brand. My consumers, existing satisfied consumers are my brand ambassadors who are trying to convince the prospects to become consumers. Sometimes we are not saying that to do, but many satisfied consumers are doing that. While we access any service, we see the various reviews, Google reviews or any other platform reviews. All those reviews are a very important but indirect way on influencing a prospect to become a consumer. Because we also talk about nowadays about the influencer marketing, wherein there are so many ways we are trying as an organization, not only using a single mode to actually reach the consumers and try to convince them to be my consumer. Rather, I'm using so many things parallelly. And all these things are trying to convert a prospect to a consumer. So from this concept, you can very well understand that it's the re getting results from our digital marketing concept or a digital marketing promotion and domain will be much easier because you are trying to use multiple sorts of results or multiple ways, which probably you were not in a position to use when you were using traditional marketing. If we come to the third perspective, we talk about the scheduling aspect. This is also very important about the timeline. The traditional marketing, the scheduling is long term. Since you do not have any way of reviewing feedback, that campaigns are planned both over and for a longer period of time. As I was saying, 20 lakh budget for one year. You know that, okay, for these three months, I will give these types of holdings. For the next three months, maybe I will give newspaper advertisements. Again, next three months, I will come back to the holding. Again, I will give some television advertisements. Likewise, it is predefined. Whatever feedback you are having, you are having from the earlier years and you are taking a structured way. Since it is a structured way, there is no recap, there is no iterations or uh, changing. You may go ahead with a long-term plan. It's a long-term plan which we are going ahead with. For digital marketing, since it is review-based, since it is happening every time, so it is definitely short-term in nature. That ad campaigns are not planned in detail, but reaction to comments and requests given. Now, this is how you see. Maybe I can see, uh, okay, you can talk about the overall budget, but you can see, okay, at the initial span, I will spend 10,000 rupees. In that 10,000 rupees, I can decide initially I will spend 2,000 rupees, see how the market is responding, then go for some corrective action, some rectification, then again spend 2,000 more. Then again, see how the market is responding. Then again, I will spend 4,000 more. And likewise, you are taking a step-by-step -step approach. Since you are taking a step-by-step -step approach, your market is more, more, more specifically giving you response. Since the market is giving you specifically more response, there is more chance of getting better response. So the Scheduling of a digital marketing advertisement in whatever mode you give, social media, search engines, etc. It will be short term in nature because ad campaigns are not planned in detail beforehand. They are being planned in a rough way. Then once doing that, you take a feedback and trying to chalk out a detailed plan and try to implement that. It will be definitely based upon the reactions to the various comments and the suggestions which are being shared by your prospects or the public as a whole. So that's about the nature of short term. It is recursive. You're taking corrective actions and going ahead with it. 
Coming to the fourth parameter about the availability, normally traditional marketing will be available during the office hours, so the working hours, 9 to 6, 10 to 5, 10 to 6, 10 to 7, whatever it. But you can reach your consumers using digital modes, 24 into 7 into 365. A consumer in today's age of mobile marketing can search about your product at night and order you. In today's age of Blinkit, you can order a product at 11.30 in the midnight and you can get it by 11.45 or 12. So that's the advantage. So as an organization also, you need to be present. But you do have an access and you do have a chance to provide your services and goods available to the consumers 24 into 7 into 365. There is no working hours or holiday concept. You can reach your consumers at each and every moment. Sometimes many marketing, digital marketing processes are automated nowadays thanks to the various aspects of artificial intelligence and other things. So you do not need to be always sitting on the other part to do digital marketing. You can create your campaign, live it and review after some time, maybe some days or some time or whatever. It maybe depends on your campaign planning. And accordingly, you can get the output and see the output is not giving me, pro uh, the output is not proper as per my expectation. I need to change the plan. I need to rectify the plan. So that's the aspect of having your presence 24 into 7 into 365. That means omnipresent across all the channels. You should not say, okay, I will be present in the 40% of the channels and not 60% of the channels. Difficult to get good results in the digital marketing. In traditional marketing, you may have. But in digital marketing, you should be omnipresent. If we talk about the aspect of this uh, language, you can see here that in the language aspect, we talk about in a traditional marketing, it is more like a formal or official communication. It is very formal, very official. But in case of digit digital marketing, it's a more direct in nature and it is genuine. It is direct personal responses and short answers. We all have seen chatbots. We use chatbots. Organizations use chatbot in the best possible way. So chatbots, what it does, I provide a query, the chatbot responds. For the initial type of regular type of questions, the chatbot responds automatically as per the plan. And if they are specific questions, if a consumer asks a specific question, then the chatbot gets directed towards specific executives. You will find that. Sometimes the chatbot will say, okay, this is a specific question. Please wait. We are getting in touch with some executives or something. So the chatbot is open to say to that, that okay, for the initial question, since it's a very standard ready-made questions, you're giving a question, the chatbot is from its database of questions, they are responding. It's just like having an FAQ, wherein the chatbot is having a FAQ, which has been fit, and accordingly the chatbot is responding based upon that FAQ, frequently asked questions. And if there are specific queries, there is human interference which is needed, and that is being shared with you. So that's the advantage of digital marketing. You are omnipresent. You are present all throughout the day. You are present all across. You are present in all the channels. So this proves the relevance and the importance of digital marketing as compared to traditional marketing. I've tried to chalk out a difference or, dis or distinction between traditional marketing and digital marketing. If you proceed further, we will now talk about a very important uh, model, not only applied 
for digital marketing aspect. But it is also having a very important role to be played in case of the aspect of digital decision making. So we may see the aspect of implementation or execution of the AIDA model. We will discuss this AIDA model with a specific focus on digital marketing strategy and the consumer decision journey. So when we talk about the AIDA model, this is an acronym for awareness, interest, desire, action, and then the advocacy. So I will talk about this a bit and then we will process proceed further for discussing the aspect of AIDA model with respect to digital marketing. The first A stands for awareness. So we are trying to aware the consumer about your brand, about your organization name, etc. So consumer has heard the brand name, the goal is to create top of mind recall. So you are trying to aware so that if the consumer is thinking of buying a product category as per yours, your brand should come to his name. The best example is Xerox, the brand creation. The concept of the thing, whatever we do is photocopy. But the Xerox, the brand which have created the first photocopy machine, is so popular that we forgot the actual name of photocopy and we are coming to the concept of Xerox only. There are other examples such as Surf. The name of the product is detergent. Surf is a brand. We say we need to have Aerial Surf, which is incorrect. You can have a detergent from Aerial or Rhin or something. But Surf is a brand which creates a detergent product. But it was so popular that people forgot or sometimes does not know the actual product name or the goods name, but they only know the brand name. Using various techniques of awareness, your objective is to have or create this impression that if a consumer thinks about a good which you are creating, which you are distributing, then your brand should come. So we call as a mind recall or a brand recall sometimes also. There will be an aspect of mind recall. They will recall your brand name while they are talking about that. Once you have created the awareness aspect, then you need to provide an interest. You need to create highly creative campaigns in the digital modes, maybe creative posters, some videos, with which the consumer or the prospect may relate. You will find the creation of reels and other things nowadays. Why the reels and stories are so popular? Because we all can relate to it and accordingly know about the brand. If I, being an organization, talk about the brand from the moment uh, 0 to 100 throughout, it will be boring sometimes. So you need to create some highly creative campaigns that break the clutter and stand out. It should be unique. It should be having some USPs, unique selling propositions. I'm not talking about the USP of the goods or the product. I'm talking about the USP in the advertisement itself. Your digital advertisement should be somewhat different from others so that the consumers or the prospects may think, okay, this is something which the organization is doing in a different way. We all say sometimes, right? And as a result of which, I will listen to that. I will see that. I will give some interest to that. Maybe I was not at all interested to buy that product. But the ad have created some interest in my mind. So ultimately, that's the success. You are trying to convert a non-consumer who does not have any interest any desire to buy your product, but to get your product. That is the success of a campaign. That is the success of creating interest. 
once the interest is there that okay i may have that the activities or the initiatives should be focused on creating and desire that means through a comparative analysis because a consumer will definitely do because we are in the age of competition monopoly is a very rare thing nowadays so when i see x i will compare with y and z when i'm doing a comparison between y and z the economic value of calculations feedback collection reviews rating etc will play a very important role when i will compare i will see cost benefit analysis that okay i am spending more on this product from x brand but what are the additional things i am getting what are the additional features i am getting what are the additional facilities or benefits i am getting okay i am getting this much more so i am ready to pay if the organization thinks no 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 i will be following a price follower strategy that means what the other organizations are charging i will go ahead with that so your product delivery should be a bit more so that a organization which is already established in the market consumers may come to you to see oh they are giving these things at a less price let me just check let me just see so that is the aspect of the converting some other brand consumers to your brand or dragging them towards your brand its desire once the consumer is more or less conversant and have done the cost benefit analysis that okay i am spending this and this is the benefit of the output which i am getting then they will see the reviews and rating in the various portals which i was talking about a bit earlier i will see the reviews in the google rating in the google what the other earlier consumers are sharing here comes the role of multi modal approach since you are omnipresent your consumers have those who have used your service they have already provided feedback they are already present in the internet domain now the prospective consumer who will be your consumer in the near future they are in a position to access those information and they are in a position to see those if they have decided okay i will go with this brand but the reviews are very poor sometimes the consumer may think i will not go with this most of the time they will think that sometimes they will think okay let me see one portal of review i let me go to the other portal of review because you have decided that okay this is a good thing you have done a cost benefit analysis since you have done a cost benefit analysis and you have decided that okay this is good you are trying to stick to your decision so in two parts this desire is being created one with respect to the product features when the consumer is doing a cost benefit analysis that is the first step if in this step the organization does not qualify that means the the consumer thinks that the organization is charging more or the features whatever they are providing is not at all good they will not progress to the next stage of reviewing the feedback rating reviews etc but once they are happy with the first step that okay the comparative analysis is good i have got good or i am getting a good cost benefit analysis from the products that i will think okay i will go ahead with she the feedback sometimes if 60% positivity is there in the minds of the consumers that okay i will go with this brand sometimes negative reviews will also not influence a consumer which happens for all of us including me we may see okay this is a review but since i have decided okay this is good i try to find out the reviews which are positive and for any organization if it is more or less acceptable you will find a mixture of reviews there are hardly any organizations which will be having 100% negative reviews or 100% positive reviews you cannot have you can have a mixture if i have the i am not earlier satisfied with the cost benefit analysis then i will only look forward for the negative reviews i will see one or two negative reviews and take a call okay it's bad but if i am positive after the cost benefit analysis and seeing that okay this is good then i will try to look forward for the positive reviews and try to avoid the negative reviews and since i have an objective that okay i will buy this and my decision is correct i am trying to find out ways to support my decision that means already in your mind as a consumer you are preferring that brand you are preferring that organization so it's now easy to convince them 
sometimes that also happen that your desire is saying that okay it is so so but you have got many good reviews which actually convert you from a so so but the, i can be a consumer i cannot also to a total consumer once you are through with this desire aspect you are going to the action that means you are trying to implement your decision you are trying to buy the action buy the product rather so ensure all hurdles are removed in front of you as a consumer that you are happy with the cost benefit analysis you are happy with the feedback reviews ratings and you have decided okay i will go ahead with it and you can go with a smooth website and navigation experience also that i was saying about the responsive website in my first lecture this responsive website or creating a responsive website is very 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 important the reason is if i have decided that i will go with this brand and this product specifically but once i am going to buy the website is not responding properly it is not giving me an a good user experience then i will feel somewhat agitated maybe the ratings and the cost management analysis have given me a positive feedback but the website experience is not good i may be 80% interested now from 100 so it has started reducing and we don't know as an organization when it will become 0% because negativity spreads in a very fast pace so again i am saying having a smooth technology experience by way of buying experience websites etc is very very important to have an effective website experience so that the consumers may go through a smooth journey sometimes it may also happen that the cost benefit analysis have given 60% results the review and rating had given 80% results overall 20% is left over but when i go to the website the website is smooth i bought the product sometimes it may also happen that i am happy 100% but the website is not giving me a smooth experience a good user experience it is not user friendly in that matter then i will think oh my god the brand is good but it is not present in a good way in the technology domain and if it is more like a technology driven product then it's difficult because giving a smooth website experience is not only dependent on you you are dependent on your website service provider the isps uh, maybe the isp which the consumer is using the hosting services all these aspects but these are all add on things you need to take care as an organization because the consumer is not concerned with all these things consumer is only concerned with one thing that okay i am buying from x the x needs to give me all the service and facilities as per my expectation that's it more so in today's competitive world this is more demanding so you need to have good service providers for the websites the hosting services and other things so that a non a, a, a poor experience in the website should not remove a prospect from being a consumer so if i presume that all these steps are done and you have acted properly and you have bought the product you will start using once you start using you will try to become an advocate of that brand advocacy you will try to do that advocacy sharing experience satisfaction or sometimes dissatisfaction after purchase if you are satisfied you will become loyal and go for repeat purchase you will go back and buy again if you are happy with the brand you can go for buying any goods that brand produces advocacy means sharing reviews rating feedback because ultimately your feedback and other things it's helping the future consumers so it's a cyclical approach that is how the process takes place and functions providing advocacy is a very important part if as a consumer you are not happy you are dissatisfied sometimes after 
acting also, your actions will be negative in nature. As I was saying, the organization, if it is providing more or less average types of services and goods, you will have a mixture of feedback. Sometimes the expectation, whatever we have, we used to get it from the brand, but ultimately our expectation increases. So this difference will be there. So this dissatisfaction may originate or may lead to some dissatisfaction, some dissatisfied consumers, but the proportion should not be more for a dissatisfaction from the organization perspective, but also uh, more for a customer satisfied who are with you in a sense. So proceeding further, that how digital marketing try to convey these, the IDA model, as well as the other digital marketing initiatives, use the concept of POEM framework. So when we talk about the POEM framework, the P stands for paid, O stands for owned, E stands for earned, and M stands for the media. So these are the three types of media or medium whatever we may use to promote our product. To be specific, to promote the goods, whatever we are creating. So in the paid media, as the name says, it is a paid type of thing. It includes sponsored advertisements in different channels of digital marketing, such as search engines, websites, social media, such as Facebook, LinkedIn, X, Nowadays, Twitter has been converted to X, YouTube, etc. To be specific, for example, in case of a search engine, we call it as a search engine ads. We also call it as a Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads, likewise. So these are paid media in which we are paying some money to the medias social media or search engine, etc. And they are doing advertisement on behalf of us. We can create some advertisements, some text, some posters, some videos, etc. And that gets communicated or promoted towards the target group. In case of the own media, it is the company's own hosted website. So the own media is the company's official website, own social media channels, or pages such as the Facebook page and also the original content which are created by the companies such as videos, images, posts, etc. You have done something, you are posting about that in your business page. In Facebook, if we talk about specifically, Facebook talks about the creation of a Facebook business page. In that Facebook business page, you post about the highlights of your organization, the activities, whatever you are doing. It is your own content because you have done that you are promoting that. You are posting about that. That is your own media. All the organizations must have, which they normally have, some own channels. Sometimes organizations' website may be on some other domains and a small organization cannot afford a website. They can use the, uh, take the help of WordPress or Blogger, but they may have a free Facebook business page a LinkedIn page or in case of X or YouTube channels. These are all free. You can do that. It's basically organic in nature. Value you can promote your brand without paying any money. But the paid media or the payment is associated with the own media only. You cannot do a promotion in your Facebook account. You can do a promotion in your Facebook page. So the first aspect is creating an own media Having some organic presence, organic presence means without paying money, you are trying to get more consumer response. Once you have got the organic way of getting the responses, then you can go for spending money using the paid media based upon your budget. As I have said earlier, it can start from the minimum of 300 to 500 rupees. It can go up to a lakh, 10 lakh, whatnot. But the range is huge which is an advantage. So that's about the owned media and the paid media. So you create an owned media, which is free in nature. You make your presence in the digital world and then use paid media to promote those things, 
so that you can reach your consumers in the best possible way. So owned media and paid media needs to work hand on hand properly so that you can reach the consumers at the right timeline with the right information. You need to be always, always available. And that's a very important partnership that can only be possible with the partnership between owned media and paid media. Now, after the paid media, owned media concept is over, we talk about the earned media. So it is an organic and unpaid. It includes publicity that is generated through recommendation, word of mouth, etc. You are posting some contents and you get likes, shares, comments, replies, retweets, favorites, etc. So once you have your own channels in the Facebook business page or LinkedIn business page or your website, you are posting contents. You are paying to Google or paying to Facebook to get some paid media aspects. But you are also using the earned media. That means the free way of promoting yourself. It's an organic way. We call it as an organic way. Organic way. And this, that organic way helps you to reach your consumers in a good way. Or not. So that's the aspect of using the paid and owned media. Sometimes you may use your channels the way you have seen the YouTubes. If your channel is very popular, other organizations will give advertisements and you can earn money. That's also, we talk about Google Ads and Google AdSense. Google Ads is creation of advertisements. Google AdSense is your earning. Your website is very popular. So people will give advertisements on your website so that you can better get better identification, better understanding, etc. So that's the aspect of creation of the paid, owned, and earned media. We, in a very short form, we acronym as acronym, we call it as POEM framework, paid media, owned media, earned media framework. So this paid media, earned media, owned media framework is very important to understand for any organization before implementing their digital marketing strategy. How much paid media I should go ahead with? How much owned media I should go ahead with? How much earned media I should go ahead with? That needs to be understood from the organization itself. So once your paid media, earned media, and organic media is there, let me just give you some insights. There should be a balance between all the media. The best practice is to have allocated 50% on running paid advertisements. This 50% number is very, very important. This is as per the various digital marketing campaigns which are being conducted. This is the data as per BMI. And this data is very recent of 2023 that you need to spend or have a balance between the various things. If you being organization have started your business pages very recently and start spending money thinking that you will get good response, it's difficult. If you do not have any organic presence, as per my experience also, I can say that if you do not have any organic presence, then your paid media cannot also give you good results. Your organic presence is a must. The internet world should know you. The internet domain should know you that you are there. Then the paid media can give you better results. Otherwise, what will happen if you're organically, you have not promoted, you have not done any work on the own media, and you have started spending, maybe you can spend a lot of money, but the results will not be as per expectation. But if you have spent good time and good strategy on the own media, then spending on the paid media can give you good results and better results. The owned and earned media are organic, hence more credible and provide higher quality traffic. But they longer take, take longer time to show results. It's organic. Organic takes longer time. So as I've said, you need to have a combination of both paid and owned media. Now, this third point is very important. The paid media will increase the paid media will increase your reach to how many persons? Impressions in short term. But once you stop running ads, you may get repeated engagement because it is being done with a focus of you're trying to boost it. You're trying to provide a, uh, or, or catalyze the, uh, the, the rate of getting response. It's just like using a catalyst. So that add-on thing 
actually is providing an initiative that you get more traffic, more reach, more engagement. But once you stop spending money, then the number of uh, uh, feedback, number of impressions, reach, etc., you are getting, it will be reduced. It's very, very important that you go for a balance. That's the reason why I've said you create an organic thing and then after that, you go for delivering on approach of a paid media. Don't think that creating a business page and starting spending money will give you good results, good presence. It is difficult to get that. And the last point, as a summary, we may say, there is a requirement of convergence of all the three mediums. But all the three mediums should merge together and create the outcome. All the three mediums. The various mediums of the paid, owned, earned needs to work in a combined way to give you a better output. It's not that only paid media can give you results or only owned media can give you results. You should not think that only owned media going for a non-organic way, not paying anything, can give you best results. It is not also possible. Maybe the proportion may vary based upon your organic presence, but you need to use the various tools. Since you're having so many tools in front of you, to create an ad and getting a good response. So when I talk about a digital landscape overall structure, we have a huge type of tools and other things which we have seen. These are the most important elements of the digital landscape, most, most important elements. Number one, you need to spend on the customer acquisition, getting customers. So for that, here I will talk about the various types of ads and other things. Google and Bing, that means the various search engines. You talk about the Google ads and the Bing ads. I will show you the results a bit later on in this lecture only. And as it captures the intent of the, of the users, as it captures the intent of the user, hence the click-through and conversion rates are also very focused. Conversion rates means I have spent 500 rupees. How many required inquiries I have got? That's a conversion. So the customer acquisition is a very important part. We call it as a customer acquisition cost, CAC. Very important parameter to understand the success of any digital marketing campaign. The customer acquisition cost. How much I am spending to get a customer? The second thing in the digital landscape is the building of brand. So you may use YouTube or to be specific at Instagram in today's age, based upon the product category, whatever you are trying to promote, the first step in brand building is creating awareness, which we have discussed in the earlier to earlier, last to last slide. IDA model. As these sites have large number of user database, so a banner ad will reach wider audience. So you also need to select while you are going for the paid media that what type of tool and what type of type of ads which we will be creating in what type of mode. If I'm going for a brand building and Instagram where there are a lot many followers, I need to go for a panel ad. Maybe it may give us better results. If I go for a Facebook, I may need to go for a more sort of a video so that I can get more attention. In a YouTube, video is the must. So you decide on your tools, maybe an image, a poster, a video, some text. It is also dependent on the platform in which you are promoting. Once you created the brand, some recognition and some response you have got. You need to go for tackling the aspect of the engagement of the consumer. In LinkedIn, Facebook, social media is more suitable for building a community and nurturing a bond with the members. It is not apt for sales and conversions. Please remember this aspect. I'm not saying this. This is being said by the digital marketing gurus and the experts, various digital marketing experts. That social media, I'm not saying it should not, it will not give results. It will give results. 
but it is more important and it can give you more better results if you use it for creating a community. You can connect with them. You are creating a group. You are sharing information. They will be knowing your brand. They will be rec recollecting your brand and your brand will be established in the minds of the consumers and they will think about you once they will talk about any goods or products related to your organization. So you are creating an engagement in the consumer. So once they will be thinking of buying anything, either they will go with the social media channels or they will go to a search engine approach. Sometimes your objective needs to be only information dissemination. You should not think that always whatever I do, I will get results. Conversion, you need to get, but you should not always focus on conversion. Then your conversion rate will be much lesser. So you may talk about information dissemination. I'm just providing you some insights on this as per my experience, as per the various digital marketers inputs. Twitter is suitable for disseminating information very rapidly. In X, if your information gets viral, you get a lot of, lot of, lot of market. Good for trending and spreading word of mouth. It is very, very good for trending and spreading word of mouth, X and Twitter. Although nowadays Facebook and other things may provide some good results, but Twitter as a tool is very good in doing this. So this platform is very specific with an objective. So if you have this objective, then only go for this platform. Otherwise, don't go with this platform because you will spend money, but you will not get results. Now, after you go for the customer acquisition, understanding, building a brand, trying to have some engagement aspects, disseminating information. The fifth part is you are trying to manage the reputation of your organization. You are using Bloomberg, Blogadda, so many other tools are there which listen and understand consumer sentiments and proactively shape the brand attitude, which can be all caused as digital public relations. Very important. It's not only about customer relations, but it is also about public relations. Who may be your prospect, who may be your past consumers. So you need to manage these things also. You cannot say that, okay, I have done my work on the search engine as well as the social media and I will get results automatically, that may not happen. So the biggest challenge of running any digital marketing campaign is to continuously manage the campaign, review it, and understand the tools based upon your objectives. And all these campaigns can be monitored using the digital analytics approach. All these come with some analytics dashboard. Facebook comes with its own. LinkedIn comes with its own, Google comes with Google Analytics, its own, and etc. So here you can see the Google Analytics is there. You can say the trending topics using Google Trends and various digital analytics tools you can use based upon the requirement. And that will give you better, better results. But you need to focus on your objective, whatever maybe you have thought of. And that objective needs to be monitored properly. So just for a quick recap, you need to remember on the customer acquisition cost, how much you are spending, building of the brand awareness, engaging them, sharing information, managing the reputation in online mode, and ultimately for all these things, you need to have your data so that you can take a rectification, corrective actions using the digital analytics. So these are the most important elements of making any digital marketing campaign successful. Now, to be a successful digital marketer, I will give you some insights. After this, I will show some demonstration for this lecture. You need to think, feel, and act. Very important. You should not blindly copy what your competitors are doing. You should not. You should think that DM requires people, very important, who can think and conceptualize. You may see other competitors' promotion campaigns, but you should know also your organization product, your organization philosophy, principle, vision, mission, etc., and try to create a campaign. This is how I want to address. Hyundai, Tata Motors, Maruti. 
three competitor brands of, in the automobile sector. They have three different target groups. They have a three different market presence. So while the ads are being created, the celebrity endorsers are being uh, are, are, are being taken forward for promoting these brands. These things are being kept in mind. They should be able to look at the metrics, the various data analytics, and analyze the performance and optimize. This is thing. It is not only thinking parameter will be there for creating the campaign, but also for reviewing the campaigns, whether the campaigns are giving good results or not. They should have the skills to analyze the data and take corrective actions. You should not only see the data, but see, okay, this campaign is not giving me good results. I need to modify this campaign. You're not deleting that campaign, but you're modifying that campaign because you're getting all the data. You should be in a position to access the data and take a call. You should be able to run campaigns on search, display, and social media based upon the requirement and your objective. They are more specific. Traditional advertisements are more general in nature, but BM advertisements are more specific in nature. They should also convey the fee. Ability to empathize with your customers. And here I want to mention very, very important point. You need to convey your organization's policy and philosophy. Hyundai and Tata Motors have a different policy and philosophy that needs to be conveyed using digital marketing campaign because you're trying to connect in a multimodal approach with your consumers in a very easy way. So you're trying to develop a content strategy. What content you will be providing? Content can be text, images, video, etc. Audio nowadays also. Use listening tools for brand association and consumer engagement. Sometimes you need to listen to your brands, uh, consumers and take actions. You should not respond. Rather, I should say you should not react, but respond. Somebody says something, you also reacted immediately. No, that's not done. You need to work in a very, very passive way, tackle those issues and accordingly act. If you think and feel properly, then you go for acting. Acting means DM requires a lot of execution, creation of images, videos, graphic designer needs to be there. Nowadays, graphic designer jobs are very, very uh, booming, but you can also create graphics using various tools. So maybe you need to know creation of basic graphics, some basic videos, etc. Editing them so that you can promote. You need to work as a holistic package. So thinking ability should be there, analytical ability should be there. Likewise, feeling, empathizing ability should be there. And to be specific on the, this is about the soft skills, the hard skills aspect. You talk about knowing the various uh, uh, statistical techniques which you need to understand, basic statistical technique, maybe the graphical representation, data representation, etc. Likewise, you need to know about creation of images, graphics, videos, etc. using the various tools. So this is a holistic framework of the digital marketing. So in a very brief recap, we have discussed about the difference between the traditional and digital marketing. We have also seen the various characteristics the AIDA framework, the usage of POEM framework, the landscape, the digital landscape, digital marketing landscape, how you can become successful. And these all things are very important to achieve with a single objective of having a proper aspect of understanding your objectives and promoting your brand. I will just quickly share my browser window to just share some insights about the aspects of how the search engine ads can function and work. I went through uh, to one of the search engines, which is Google, and I have seen, say, for example, I want to buy laptops. So I have typed laptops. And I clicked on enter. You can see here, this is how we get results, right? Some results are being written by sponsored. So this is the results which are paid results. These organizations have paid to Google to create these results. And these results are organic results. That means they are not paid results, non-paid results. This Amazon, Flipkart, Chroma, these are all non-paid results. Any 
Earlier, we used to call it Google AdWords. Now we call it as Google Ads. Earlier, it used to have a yellow intimation. Then it comes with ads written. Now it is being written as sponsored. So this is a sponsored ad. And this is how if you click on that, these three dots, you can see the various types of brands, what they are trying to promote. HP, Lenovo, laptops, because they have understood that I want to buy a laptop. These sponsored ads are thing. And these are all the various other, other results, whatever is being shown. These are all organic results. Now remember that the results, whatever we are, are shown, you may check that when we search laptops, there are two most important parameters based upon the which the search results are being shown. Number one, search results are being shown with respect to my user behavior. That what type of products I buy, what type of products I search accordingly. And number two, it also is being shown based upon the popularity of the website, how that website is, how, how many persons all across the globe is searching that. That's the popularity of the website. These are the two most important parameters. So if you search laptops at different span of time also, the results will vary. And accordingly, your objective as an organization to get you located at the top as much as possible. Because if your results are below, maybe users will not see. If I go below, users will not see. So you can see here that earlier it is to come with next, next, next. Nowadays, Google have integrated the pages. It is coming as sponsored. If I go below, these are all non-paid. If I go below further, go below further, then again, some sponsored are coming. That means it is second page. Again, I am going these things. Again, I am going these things. Again, sponsored is coming. This is the third page. So in between there, this Amazon is sponsored. See later on. So that means the investment is less. Or maybe the organic results are not so much. So accordingly, that can be delivered. This is a very fundamental thing about the results, how the organization can use with respect to the digital marketing. I hope you could follow about the basic fundamental aspects of the digital marketing initiatives and its relationship with the marketing. Always remember that marketing is fundamental. Marketing is universal. Digital is one of the ways to reach the consumers only, but the fundamental principles of marketing mix and others remains always the same. They never changes. The way of reaching the consumers changes as per the digital marketing initiatives. Thank you so much.